today on Alaskan Ballistics, 300 Weatherby Magnum versus 300 Winchester Magnum. Which one should you really get? Welcome back to Alaskan Ballistics. My name is Chuck. Thank you for joining us today. Today we have my 300 Winchester Magnum, and it is on a Weatherby Vanguard First Light. And we are shooting 175 grain Barnes LRX. We loaded it with a max charge of H4831SC. Brand new Nosler Brass. Kind of disappointed in the Nosler Brass. I had to, it's supposed to be ready to load, and I had to go over these primer pockets. Lately, I've seen that with Nosler Brass. Not too cool, Nosler. So, anyway, there we go. Barnes LRX, 175 grain. If you follow the channel, you know that Barnes LRX is my favorite bullet to absolutely hunt with. It's going to expand well, at least out to 500, maybe a little farther. And it's going to shoot pretty accurately. I've, I've had some really accurate groups. Some calibers really love it. Some calibers don't. Cartridges, rather. So, we joined Austin with the Reloading Weatherby channel, so go check out his page. He sent me all the footage so that we could do 300 Weatherby Magnum, which he owns in a similar rifle, which is also a 26-inch barrel. And I could do it versus 300 Winchester Magnum. Now, I will say this, I would always choose 300 Winchester Magnum during the ammo crisis, because the last 300 Weatherby Magnum I saw on the shelf... The cheapest place had it for 99 bucks for Remington Corlock. So <laughs> up here, that's the main reason why I would choose it is ammo cost, ammo prices, that kind of thing. But we all know the, little, the 300 Weatherby Magnum has a little bit more case capacity. How much faster is it really? And what's that going to do to affect bullet performance? I don't think our penetration test came out exactly the same. So you'll see that in great detail. And mine, I pulled a little bit and didn't have any more time or resources to film again. So you're going to just kind of get what you get. But we did recover the bullet. All right. So with all that being said, first chronograph, add-up slide, then penetration test. Go subscribe over to Reloading Weatherby's channel. All right, here we go. 175 grain LR Rex loaded with a max charge of Hodgson 4831 SC. Just like Reloading Weatherby. 26 inch barrel Weatherby Vanguard. Here we go. First light Vanguard. Here we go. Well, fairly consistent within 30 feet per second of each other or so. Barrel's getting really hot after shooting a lot today. We have to let it cool down. Anyway, let's go check out Austin's chronograph. This is my 300 Weatherby Magnum. It's a Weatherby Vanguard synthetic rifle. It does have a 26 inch barrel, and I'm using a magneto speed chronograph. I will be shooting four shots to test the velocity. Here is our add up slide. Thank you for watching so far. Make sure you go subscribe to the Reloading Weatherby channel. I was really shocked. At least I got a better standard deviation. I thought it would be a little bit more, but that's a lot more velocity. It's over 300 feet per second more, and it's over. Wow, I couldn't believe it was this much. It's almost. 800 foot pounds of energy more it's like seven something 700 something foot pounds of energy more now to be fair with a different powder i could probably get 3150 in this 26 inch barrel if i really wanted to but i tried to keep the powder the same 
3150 would get me about 3,800 foot-pounds. It is much more powerful load in the 300 Weatherby. I didn't know exactly how much more powerful it really was. Just showing you what I have set up for the 300 Wind Mag versus 300 Weatherby Mag. We're doing with Reloading Weatherby, Austin over there at his channel. We've got the two packs of bologna taped to a 2 by 4 All right. Bologna is kind of the meat flesh. This is going to represent some bone. I've got 12 almond milk containers with lots of bottles on the side in case deflects or petals fly off, which I expect petals to fly off with the LRX. All right, here we go. 300 Wind Mag versus 300 Weatherby Mag. Hope Austin has better conditions to shoot in when he does his test. We've got the bologna packs, the wood, and then 12 jugs of water that were former almond milk jugs or oat milk or whatever crap that is that I have to drink. Got some jugs on the side in case we catch petals or bullet deflects. I tested these. I took two shots. They're touching right in the center of the bullseye at 50 or 60 yards that we're at. So. Well, I think it did an all right job. Let's see how far we penetrated. Well, it looks like it blew the baloney everywhere. Hit dead center, almost dead center of the baloney. And we got a bullet going out the left. Unfortunately, it went out the left a little bit. Probably, oh, it's in this jug right here on the side. So it penetrated six of these jugs and got into a big jug right here. So six of those jugs plus the bologna meat, the two packs of bologna, not a very straight shot, but you can see it's got good. It probably would have went through maybe two more of these. So it's in here though. Let's see what we got. There we go. Always an airplane flying over here. All right, here we are. After going through six milk cartons, and the two by four and two bologna packs that are just splattered everywhere the bologna packs are you know not the best shot I, I jerked the trigger just a little bit but we found it in a side water jug you know I, i'm saying it would have gone through maybe seven poked a hole in the eighth maybe been found in the eighth but there we go i'm not sure i have enough i have enough rounds i'm not sure i have enough uh enough to do this shot again all right we're gonna shoot the 175 grain 300 weatherby lrx you know it's going 3300 feet per second and uh hopefully i hit it dead on firing All right, so here's the carnage. Uh, looks like it went through all of the almond milk. It did go through the distilled water. And this is the last jug that I could see that it went through. So the bad news is, I don't think I'm gonna find this bullet. I was afraid that it was going to over penetrate everything. And it looks like it just, it did just that, so. I'm going to keep looking. Hopefully I find the bullet. Okay, so the baloney, well, it got incinerated. Um, my wood, well, my stump that I had that was to represent bone, cracked in a ton of little pieces. And I'm currently looking for the bullet. I got lucky and found it in this one. I believe this is the sixth jug it went through, but that's what it looked like. Again, it was going around 3,300 feet per second. So, yeah, happy to find it.
So here is my bullet that I recovered, 174 grains, just over .635 inches. Not bad, it kept all of its pedals, retained all of its weight, almost all of its weight, that's pretty good. Now as you can see here, Austin got a little less expansion because his pedals fell off, and that happens. His bullet weighed 150 grains, 0.8 grains, 150.8 grains, he's got the old school scale there. Not a big concern about the pedals falling off, that really makes the LRX a great hunting bullet. Those of you that like ELDX and SSTs and other bullets that tend to shatter on the inside, non-bonded soft points, well the LRX is kind of the best of both worlds. It's going to penetrate like a Nosler partition, it's going to shed those pedals at fast enough speed where you get real explosive damage to the inside, but it's going to penetrate all the way through where you're going to get the blood trail that you need from that explosive damage. Thank you very much for watching. I want to thank Austin over at the Reloading Weatherby channel. Great small channel, guys. He's, he's a man of his word. He does what he says. Unlike other small channels I've tried to work with in the past, he will do what he says, and he's a good guy. Generally, genuinely like him. Consider him a friend here on YouTube, and hopefully he'll come hunting up here next year. So anyway, all that being said, go subscribe to him. Obviously, the 300 Weatherby Magnum has more power. You probably knew that coming into this video, but I have to say, I like, for ammo crisis time, I like the 300 Winchester Magnum better, and it's been terrible to find here in Alaska. The 300 Winchester Magnum has been absolutely terrible to find here in Alaska during the ammo crisis, and getting brass has been hard. You know, getting 30 caliber bullets, not as hard, but it was difficult for a while. Good hunting bullets anyway. Well, guys, I have my jump page. We're going to head over to the jump page for all my affiliate links. So that link is in the description. And don't forget to check out our t-shirts, our Patreon. Keep the channel going. With all that being said, if we've earned your subscription, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range.